In this video here, we'd like to take a slightly deeper look at voltmeters and the idea of voltage uh, in the context of the following question. Why is it that voltmeters always have two leads on them? A black and a red. Why is that? Why can't we just do it all with a red? We can certainly see one. You don't want to touch that to different areas of the circuit to make a measurement. Why is those two? Why do you have to hold the other one somewhere while you make one of the other measurements? I think it's probably more intuitive for current measurements because obviously you need the current to go into the meter and then come back out of the meter. But for the voltage measurements, why two? Let's see if we can figure that out. By way of analogy, let's think of what happens just briefly for a minute here when a ball is lifted up above the ground. You may know this or you may not, but the ball actually has something called potential energy when you lift it above the ground by some distance, say, h, some height h above the ground. Uh, we, we know it has potential energy because, for instance, what you could do is you could put a little soda can down here, and if you draw the ball in a soda can, you would crush the soda can. So the ball must have energy because it takes energy to crush the soda can, and also when the ball finally reaches the ground like this, maybe on top of the crushed soda can, it doesn't have any energy anymore. So the ball has some potential energy just because it's above the ground. Drop it on your foot, it hurts, that kind of thing. But the idea now is potential energy is how do you know how much potential energy it has? Well, the higher you lift it, the more potential energy it has. This isn't really too important for us here, but the amount of potential energy it has is equal to the ball's mass times gravity times the height above the ground that you lift it. But the question is, how do you know what H is in? Sure, G has something to do with the Earth. It's 9.8 for Earth or some other number for other planets, and M is how much stuff is in the ball, the mass of the ball. But how do you know what H is? Well, or how could you determine H? Well, H is most easily determined, of course, this isn't a trick question here, by using something like a yardstick. So what you could do is you could take a yardstick like this and place it like this, and the yardstick has a bunch of numbers on it like this, and you could just measure what H is. So here's your first clue about why voltmeters have two wires, because yardsticks have two ends. In other words, you can certainly measure the height of the ball up here, but it's very important to put this end somewhere. You have to put that reference end somewhere here. This is sort of like the reference, the reference end. It's convenient to put the reference end on the ground because you like to measure heights relative to the ground, six feet above the ground, five feet above the ground, 3.2 meters above the ground, whatever the case may be. That's for, sort of for the reference right here. And that's your first clue. The black lead on a voltmeter is the reference voltage. But why would you need a reference voltage like that? And say, Well, let's think a little bit about what voltage even is. So you might think a voltage is something that comes from a battery like this. And we've had a few examples of batteries like this. The 9-volt battery sits here with a couple terminals like that. So what, is actually, what does a battery do, actually? Well, one of the easiest ways of thinking about what a battery does is think of the charge escalator model. It's just a little analogy you can use here to think about what goes on inside of a battery. And in particular, what happens? Imagine a battery is a box like this. It has a little input jet right here that takes charge there and a little output jet right here. So this is sort of an in right here for charge, and there's an out. And what is inside here is, a, is an escalator. So if you were a charge here in a circuit, you could get on the escalator, say there's a positive charge getting on the escalator, and the positive charge would start rising the escalator, climbing the escalator, the escalator is going to pull it up at the expense, of course, of the chemical potential energy in the battery and so on. The battery will, will, will go dead at some point. But in either case, the charge will get lifted and it will go out here and sort of can feed the circuit. Maybe you have the circuit connected to things like light bulbs and motors and things like that. But this is sort of what a battery does. It takes in charge and lifts the energy of the charge. So this axis here might be higher energy. And like a 1.5 volt battery doesn't give charge as much energy as a 9 volt battery or a 12 volt battery or a 100 volt power supply, something like that. So really what a battery is is sort of a charge escalator. It gives charge energy. And once it has this energy, it can flow around a circuit. It can make light bulbs come on and cell phones ring and motors go off and stuff. But then when it gets done with the circuit, it's more or less dead. It has to go back in the battery to get lifted back up again before it can do, do some more work. And so this analogy here is just like the ball over here. We give the ball potential energy because it was lifted above the ground, and we have to measure how high it is before we can get a measure of how much energy the ball has. We have to put the end of the yardstick down there and on the ground. Well, the same thing happens for voltages over here. We have to know what this ground reference was over here for the voltmeter. What are we referencing to? Almost like the ground over here. So that's why when we make voltage measurements, we always want to measure the voltage across something 
So we might put one lead over here, that's the reference on the escalator where the charge is going in, or you might put the other lead right here, that tells us how much electrical energy the charge has when it left the battery. And you don't just have to do this across batteries, you can do it across components like resistors and light bulbs, but the two leads always measure what the voltage difference is on the in versus the out of a device. Sometimes the charge escalator, the battery is the case that always gives things potential energy. The battery generally raises the potential energy of charges, but other things like resistors and light bulbs can actually lower the charge. So other devices could not be a, could be a charge escalator just like this one is here, but it might be sort of in the downward sense. Charge might lose potential energy when you enter the battery. The direction might be this way. So as your charge coming in like this, you might have a lot of potential energy and you might sort of go down this escalator here and come out at a lower potential right here. That's certainly possible, and a lot of electrical devices like resistors and light bulbs do that. In the case here, you would still need your reference right here. I'd still want to put this reference right there to measure what the charge was when it went in, or if I reverse the lead right there, I could measure what the energy of the charge was as it came out, that kind of thing. But in either case, that's what you need the reference for. The reference is very much like the other end of a yardstick in the analogy like that. So just conclude the video here, leaving you with just two ideas here. One thing in your mind here is here's a yardstick. Remember that yardsticks always have a reference. The end where we have to put it, or a tape measure even. Tape measure is this fantastic little device that comes out, always has that little hook on it like that. And that's also the reference. You also have to hook that on something before you can make a measurement. Well, the voltmeter is the same thing. Here's a voltmeter like this. There's your display up there. And there's always going to be the red and the black. So there's your red probe. Here's your black probe right here. And that black probe, that thing that sticks out with a needle on it like that, that is also the reference for voltage measurements. And once that reference is put down, the other end of the tape measure, the other end of the yardstick, just like the other end of the voltmeter here, this can be used to make your measurements here. So all these references are kind of like one and the same thing. They have to be put somewhere. And once that reference is set, all these other ends here are sort of the same thing. You can measure the potential that exists at that point, the height of something at that point, or how long something is at that point. And so that's sort of the idea there between why you always need these two wires on a voltmeter. Strong analogy with gravitational potential energy.